All right, guys, so we are at Craig's shop and we're gonna be working on the most important, one of the most important parts of this bike, and that is the forks. Here's, this is kind of what's been holding us up for a while. They've got a bend to it, they're, they're bent. We're gonna take these things apart, clean them up. We found a guy who could fix them for us, but he couldn't really do it in our time frame. So we're just gonna do it ourselves. We had that Thanos, Craig had that Thanos moment where he grabbed this gauntlet and he said, I'll do it myself. You that's remember? exactly how it that's happened. That's exactly what happened. We're gonna take it apart and we're gonna try to straighten it, then we'll get it cleaned up. What we're being told is bent, is this thing should be completely straight. And this is off because this is bent, this tab right here. So we gotta press that back and then somehow press this thing back. So my first reaction to when I found out that these forks were bent was, I could just buy another set of original forks. But we really didn't want to do that because me and Craig are really trying hard to fix what we have on the bike. Even if it costs us a little bit extra to do that. And in some cases, it's costing us a lot extra. Because throughout the years, there's been a lot of companies that make aftermarket parts for this thing. But out of curiosity, I wanted to see what some originals would cost if we end up not being able to fix these. And what I found was, for the non-spring part of the fork that we're currently trying to bend back, it was gonna cost us 1,900 bucks, and at least another 1,500 bucks for the rest of the fork. So if we can successfully bend these back, it's gonna be worth at least 1,900 bucks. And we get to keep some more of the bike's originality. Now, I didn't think it was gonna be that hard to bend these things back into shape until I found out that basically, that almost no one ever bends these things back and the reaction we got from people who we told we were gonna bend back, they all kind of laughed at us. But if anyone can fix these forks, it's me and Craig. A double spring setup is very interesting. Now we got a rebuild kit for this part of the fork, so I'm not sure. Do the other one. Yep. Still waiting for something to be under spring pressure, and it's like pew! Nice. Teamwork. You guys see that? Dan, did you catch that? Yes, I did. Somewhere here, between here and here, is where we think of this piece is bent, because that should be flat. And then here is where this one is bent. Once we take it all apart, we can make everything perfect and measure up and micrometers and, you know, measuring words and, If we take that, we pull it that off. way, but these still have to get disconnected. These still have to come off. Yeah, yeah, there it goes. It's going. Uh, oh, bloods. No, I hit my knuckle on that stupid horn. Now it's coming off. Uh, I'm bleeding. No. There we go. Oh, that was easy. Nice. Just like that. We might have to replace this. Yeah. This thing's, I mean, it's, it's bent in so many. Different directions. Yeah, it's off. Like the whole thing is leaning this way. And then you got this bend, yeah. that's off. So if we had a good one of these, we would at least be able to, when we put it in this. This is interesting. This almost looks like it was heated already. This is the part we're gonna try to straighten. And doesn't it look like it was already heated? We're gonna find the guy that originally had it. Joey, Joey's gonna come back. Joey Chitwood and be like, you pulled that piece of junk out of the it junkyard? So here's the thing that I struggle with with projects like this, where you're not moving anywhere. And uh, 
I don't know, maybe it happened at one point in time in my life where it worked out well, but every other point in my life it worked out poorly, but you just get like, you get frustrated. You're like, let me just hit something as hard as I can. Let me just bang on it for a long time. And then you break it and, and then you really put yourself back. So this is where you gotta calm down, look at the manual, make a couple phone calls, trying to figure out how it actually got put together and then you can figure out how to take it apart. Craig, he's a little bit better at that than me. He has more patience. We started having some problems getting the forks apart, so we called someone who can help. Our buddy, Chad, the fork expert. Talk to me. What's up, Chad? How's that Corvette going? Better. Uh, I got the windshield wipers working like you're supposed to. And <laughs> nice. I'm going to have that freaking... Uh, my, my plan is, by the end of the day, have the body sitting down on the chassis. How about by the end of the day, we're doing burnouts with it on the drift track? How about that will never happen? <laughs> hey. Craig's got a question. We're working on these forks. He also said you had you were very confident that we could straighten these forks out ourselves. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, here's you go. Hey, the the dampener mechanism yep. that comes up through the uh, the head tube, and does that just that's all one that rod is all one piece from top to bottom? Does that just knock out? Chad also showed us how the Corvette project is going, where he's doing a full resto mod on a fully restored C3, and he's putting the body on what I think is a C6 Corvette chassis with an LS3 motor. That when it's all done, it's gonna be pushing around 750 horsepower, naturally aspirated. The vehicles that Chad builds is really next level stuff. So we put some heat on the fork, hit something with a hammer, and it worked just as Chad said. Feels like it's moving? Yeah, it's moving. There we go. There we go. We got it. It's happening. And there's the problem. There's a brass, brass thing stuck up in there. Well, that's weird. Oh, you like that? I can't pick it up. Can't pick it up. You gonna hit this or am I gonna hit it? <laughs> 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 so we took it back to the blaster to make sure that there were no cracks in the metal and to make sure that all the levels of paint are completely off so when we measure it, we can get an accurate number. This is like some wizard stuff. I'm gonna throw this in there, see what, the, see what Craig can do with this. It's a 1,200 year old chromed out spring. Do it Craig, do your way with it. I, th I think Craig's trying to steal this. looks like. Craig, is this a brass spring? Why is it all pinkish? It's probably the coating under the, that could be the coating under the chrome. I was really hoping for like a good before and after, but I think Craig just lost interest in the spring. Is it, well, what does it look like? It's pretty pitted. 
You want to spray that off? There will be. A I'm moment. assuming this is for the, uh, the 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 fender mount. Yeah, I believe so. So if that's not straight. So while Craig's working on getting that uh, getting the press set up, I'm gonna work on measuring these tabs. I'm just kind of measuring things, trying to get some idea of you know this point to that point or to the center of the hole to make sure these are straight. I'm, I'm concerned that there might be another, it's sitting flat, but this side is up. So is that all because of the, what's up here? Or is there something else? Well, I guess the question is which one is bent? Yeah. What does it look like if you do it on another table? Well, it depends on which side you look at. Because when you're in the middle, that doesn't look that horrible to me. Yeah, that one just looks, just cocked in a hair. So our main strategy is to push these tabs down and to make this angle a perfect 90 degree angle. Currently it's about seven degrees off. Then once we get that thing figured out, we can see what else might be bent. It to be level because A, it's, it's, it is very close, but B, we just subtract the difference to get 90 to here. So if this is at, 88 or 89 leaning front, we take this to one or two. So we set up the press and got the metal hot. And as slow as we could, we started the process of slightly moving it with the press, and then measuring it, and then trying to keep it hot. You gotta touch it with your tongue. That's what I was thinking. I'm afraid it's gonna kink here. If we move too fast, we're concerned that it could crack. And if it cracks, there's no fixing that. But if we can successfully get it straight, we will rub it in Chad's face because he didn't think we could do it. And let's be honest, that's the real reason why we do anything around here. This is really, 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 really close to being perfect. Speaking of Chad, Chad is the guy who's gonna be painting the body for this motorcycle. We got the body and the tins back from the body shop that we had before, and Chad is gonna finish them up before and get them all ready before he paints them. As of now, our, our plans are painting the bike blue. According to our last survey, this is what your decision was, but you still have time to vote. There's a link in the description right here. That's gonna transfer so much though across that distance. But it shouldn't. Push it flat as table. One of those, or maybe that one over there. Am I deceiving myself? Or is that the most perfect thing you've ever I'm seen? I'm pretty sure that's the most perfect thing. Second most perfect. I love you, honey. All right, so now we got this thing perfectly straight. We proved everybody wrong that we could not make it straight, but we did. Let's, uh, let's finish uh, sandblasting this and get it all cleaned up and ready for the next step. Then do, and do we keep these ugly looking horns on here? Doesn't it take so much discipline to like stay in one area and get it done versus just jumping all around? Yeah, it's the worst. I hate everything about it. I <laughs> know. <laughs> That's that's underneath the weld. Yeah. Yep, you got it. Good job. Uh, I'm bleeding, Greg. I'm bleeding. Uh, it's fine. It's far from your heart. That is not bad. That is not too bad. That gives you a better idea of what it's gonna look like. Uh, that's at the shop, I believe, putty. Ah, uh, maybe I have some here. Well, guys, that was a that was a pretty big deal. We spent pretty much the better part of the day just working on this part of the forks, and realistically, we probably have what? How many more days working on just the front forks? 
Now, oh, I don't know, till we uh, paint and everything? Opposed to the rear forks. Yeah, these Maybe are another, a day or two. A day or two, yeah. So like, everything takes, there's a, and that's, that's a lot of work, a lot of work to put this thing together. Guys, thanks for being a part of this. Thanks for watching. We have a lot more fun stuff coming up. We'll see you guys next time.